in to the online broadcast network. After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey there, After Buzzers. Welcome back to After Buzz TV. Ray Donovan after show. We're going to be breaking down Records of Champions Season 3, Episode 4. My name is Isaac Johnson. You may follow me on Twitter at Isaac Johnson. And joining me today is the lovely Anna Koppel. Hey, you can follow me at Koppel Frayer, K-O-P-P-E-L-F-O-R-M-A-Y-O-R. Also the ever dapper Sean Overman. Hey everybody, you can follow me at Sean Austin O, Twitter and Instagram. Yes, and some guy named Matt Lieberman. This guy named Matt Oh, Lieberman. that guy. Yes, this guy. And you can follow me on Twitter if you aren't already, at Matt Lieberman, M-A-T-T. L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N. Yeah, I don't know who's not following you on Twitter at this point. Plenty Matt. of people. Yeah, okay, Lots good to know. Folks, go head over to YouTube.com, After Buzz TV, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave us a comment. We'd love to talk with you. That was a lot of words really fast. My heart's racing. How are you guys feeling about this episode? <laughs> I'm feeling great about yeah. it. I feel like we've we've really uh, com complicated this story very quickly. Yes. I wasn't sure what shape it was going to take a few weeks ago, but I like this conflict, and I like that we are having this reflection of the Finney family against the disintegration of the Donovan family, uh -huh. uh, and this just ever-present theme of, you know, a family business is one thing, but a, a bad family business one thing, but a bad family is another thing, or a good family business is one thing, good family uh, family is another thing. I'm mixing up the quote a right. little bit. Just a little. Okay, I'm not sure if it was good or bad. It was good. It was good family is one thing, good family business another, but you know, in reverse, whatever. But yeah, I totally agree. I love that he's working for a family that also has a family business and and uh, obviously like the patriarch is uh, it's the patriarch. And, uh, and kids that hate him mm -hmm. clearly hate mm -hmm. him. Much like are, Ray's own kids. Oh, right. Exactly. And girl as well. Right, yeah. totally. Yeah. We, we see what you're doing. We see what you're doing, Showtime, and we yeah. like it. Yeah, we do. Sean, how do you feel? I liked how we got to learn a lot more about the Finney family, mm -hmm. and we get to see how disrespectful Casey is to a guy who saved him from imminent death. Mm -hmm. What yeah. a bastard he is. And he's crazy, too. Well, but we'll talk about him more he later. He does have a father. I don't I think feel he's like a he's, literal bastard. He's, just, he's up his own butt. He's just he's he's very much, he thinks he's a genius or he's been told that he is and uh, that he can get away with anything because he has money, because he's a genius. Mm -hmm. uh, second one, most definitely not. But the I think another key element here is this deepening mystery of people keep asking, Ray, do you know what you've gotten yourself into right. uh, and who the Finneys are and what they've done, and that ongoing mystery continues to fuel everything that's going on this season because he will have to pick a side in this war between father and daughter. Sure. And uh, it seems like the actions of last episode have caused him to have to pick a side prematurely. We don't know which one mm -hmm. is ultimately worse. I'm glad that Ray doesn't know that much because it helps us to learn more the more he finds out. And you know, it's a classic tool, but we get to use it well with the Finney family. They didn't just they didn't just tell us everything right away in the first couple of episodes. All right. Well, this is where I'll share my thoughts on the episode. Please. I care to hear them. Uh, just kidding. Uh, the, when we last left our heroes in the Homes of Justice, we were getting Terry out of prison. I really like the I like the brother storyline. That one hits home most with me because I have two brothers. Um, and, and I am the middle, just like Ray is. So it's really cool. Um, let's get into the story. Uh, Terry looks awful. Can we all agree on this? Oh, Does yeah. Look yeah. At least like he, a bit haggard. At least he got the blood cleaned off of him, though. Finally, it's probably been a few days, so I think he's had a shower or two. No one knows yet. The swelling's gone down a little bit in the eye. Yeah, it has. Um, he's uh, so he's in the uh, the Fight Club there. They're trying to reintroduce him, of course. Mick is quick to jump on the. Um, oh yeah, we did a lot to get you out of here. Of course you did, Mick. What did you do again? Uh, kill a judge, I believe. That's that's by a very accident. helpful thing. By accident. Uh, okay, by Allegedly. accident, sure. Yeah. But it seemed he didn't care for this man's health. 
so um, I'm not buying his story. I, I do want to point out though, yes. like it was this is an episode that was heavy on product placement and a bit, yeah, and, I and super, I think. Okay. Um, and Mickey also had that line, you know, pulled a, foot, a few tricks. So I don't know if that was supposed okay. to be because <laughs> tricks the rabbit, right? It was big in that. So I don't know yeah. if that was on purpose or not, but if it was, it was clever. It could be. I was gonna say there was some brand name Coke there on the table. I don't know if was you guys it? caught it. I don't know a brand name Coke. <laughs> yeah. You mean Coca Cola or do we mean the, the I mean cocaine, okay. cocaine. What's the brand name of uh, that Coke? That is uh, Snowflake. Okay. Is that is that a real thing? <laughs> yeah, this uh, this po podcast is also sponsored by Snowflake Cocaine. Snowflake Cocaine. If it rains, it pours. If it snows, it's Snowflake Cocaine. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, I like that because Bridget's nickname yes. is Snowflake Glass. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. All tied in. <laughs> yeah. Um, I really like him sort of putting Ray to the test there about what the heck he actually did to get him out of there. It seems very important. He, and also, I like that that means that Terry cares a lot about Ray. Well, Terry is all about guilt. And yeah. the fact that he knows that it must have taken Ray moving mountains to get him out of there. Literally, yeah. Now he's feeling guilty about that because he especially, he specifically told Ray, do not do this, abandon me. Because he's a martyr. He's a martyr complex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so he doesn't want to he doesn't want to go on living knowing that Ray has ruined his life to give him an extra 3 years. Right. And even uh, Terry knows who Andrew Finney is. I don't know if he knows how messed up the Finney family is, but he's mm -hmm. heard of him and the way Ray talks about him is like he's never heard of him. So no, at does, times. He, does he specifically know who Finney is or just like another rich guy that he basically raised in his pocket? I oh, think you're talking about Terry. Yeah, yeah, does Terry really know who Finney is? Would he know? Or is it just to him, just someone else that Ray is now indebted to? I think it's just he's aware that he's he's a rich white man. That's what I would think. Yeah. Yeah. Anna? Yeah, no, I agree. I think that, and, and also he did have the line, so he made you his servant. Right. Um, so, so he's aware of that, and he's aware that he is a powerful man, but I don't think, I mean, if Ray doesn't know what the Finneys are into, then right. why Terry doesn't know. Yeah, well, and then even further, he, um, oh, shit, I just lost my train of thought. Um, there's, there's the point where Ray is talking, or he's talking to Ray about, oh, gosh, I can't remember at all. It was going to be brilliant, guys, I swear. Okay. It's be really good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it just didn't happen. You want to you wanna move on to Francis? Uh, no, I don't. Not there's yet. something about Ray. I don't know. Who you guys got? Wait, so Terry was talking to Ray about... Uh, Gosh, I can't Finney remember. and the power. And, it was all along those the lines. Money and the money and the stuff. servant. And He's an indentured servant now. No. Yeah. Pretty because much. Because of Terry. And Terry now is going to live with that guilt, and he's not sleeping. Terry is basically, like, he, he's in the worst shape of his life. And mm -hmm. he doesn't, he, he's kind of, he's just, he's over. He doesn't want to be alive anymore. He was ready to walk to his death. Yeah, he was absolutely ready to die there in prison. To yeah. get shivved by the Aryans. Yeah, and at this point, he considers himself a liability and a weight, a stone hung around the neck of his family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, you've got Mick acting as if everything's fine and as if he, he yeah. helped him out. And also... So, you know, as if he didn't get him put in jail in the first place. Right. Well, I like it coming back to that at the end, especially him bringing it back to the illness, which, uh, you know, the illness is largely caused by boxing, which is something that Maggie pushed him into. This is another situation that, like, I'm really asking him the question there about, are you going to be around when it gets worse? Because it is only going to get worse from this point. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Mick's going to say that he always says so much, but he hardly ever follows through on things. At least he no. doesn't follow through very well. They always get messed up in some way. Yeah, well, that's Yes. You know what I found rather poignant is uh, Terry and Ray had this conversation, and Terry's like, "What? What are you doing? Go home. You are the only one who has a yep. chance of this uh, to leave, to have a family, to that leave was it. something. That was the point. There it is. Bingo. <laughs> to leave something meaningful behind. And then when he's he talks uh, when he's talking to um, to Mickey, and Mickey says, "Well, I wanted to leave a legacy behind, of <laughs> whores and cocaine. Yes. You know, I mean, I just felt like that was such a sad, painful moment for Terry." Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Absolutely. What did you want to say about that? Uh, no, that was just the point I was trying to think oh, okay. of. I'm asking <laughs> Ray, or telling Ray that you're the only one who has a real shot at this, which doesn't necessarily seem like reality, but why wouldn't Terry feel like he can have a chance? Other than, I've, obviously, Francis is no longer his life. The Parkinson's. Well, he sees okay, himself yeah, as yeah. being a ding, even though he doesn't like being called it, you know, but right. he sees himself as being this this limp, I don't want to say penis, but yeah. now I'm going to say it. <laughs> he said it. That he's not able to have anybody carry on his legacy. He can't even get with Francis. He couldn't move them to Ireland. He couldn't uh, He couldn't get the money with his botched robbery, right? So he couldn't do anything for her. He, f he feels like he's just inadequate. Right, but Francis didn't want it in that way, which is the point that she brings to him, that you know, I don't want to be involved in this business with your family and them doing whatever they do, which she doesn't say, but we all know what it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, I mean, other than, okay, so he obviously has Parkinson's, so he's not going to have a long life, but he can still have a quality life, and he seems to be saying that Ray is the only one who's going to have a quality life. In his mind, Terry believes that even if he could have a quality life at this point, he doesn't deserve it. Like, Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah. At this point, Ray is the only person who, as morally corrupted or morally ambiguous as he's had to be, he still has time on his side, health on his side, mm -hmm. and actual kids to mold that could potentially lead to a turnaround. Would it be difficult? Nigh impossible? Absolutely. But mm -hmm. Terry is trying to make a point here that Ray should never have to feel how Terry feels right now. Over the hill with a life wasted. Yeah, I agree. Um, I also like Terry being the one to encourage him to go home. I, don't, I think if anyone's actually going to reach Ray... It's to, Terry. It's, it's going to be Terry. Yeah. 100%. Um, which, I mean, I guess he does go home at the end of the episode. Who knows how long that's going to be. It's kind of hard to tell. Depends on whether or not he brings that dog in. Yeah. He still <laughs> doesn't have a name. Yes, he does. It's Dog. That's, that's not a name. Dog's name is Dog. Okay, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for saying my name properly. Yeah, no Human. Yeah. Yes, there you go. Yeah. Um, so Abby takes a little trip back to Southie there to visit her brother's bar to also make out with a guy in a wheelchair. Random. Um, kind of gross and awkward. Yeah. Why is, why why is, that, is that gross or awkward? I don't know. Just the way she kissed him, like, on the lips. Like, I thought she was going to do a cheek kiss with some guy who... But did she say she slept with him before? Was yes, that she did. He, uh, this is a former first. lover. No, he's the first. She, he no, took no. that Irish cherry. What? No, but she's, no. But she's, she's, no. You know, I know she's cheated on Ray before one time, right? Yeah, but that's, the cop. But that's one affair, of, not yeah. one time. I know. One <laughs> affair, right? One affair, unlike Ray. Many I'm sorry. Okay. I have been dying to hear Anna's take on Abby all season, and I would like to hear Let's it. move it over to her. Okay, let's move it over. First of all, like I just want to make it clear what she said was, did your mother ever tell you that I lost my virginity to a cripple? Uh, and he, this this gentleman, I think, was just a friend um, who, since Abby's last seen him, got mm -hmm. into a, an accident. He was on a motorcycle. He hit a truck. He said he lost to the no, truck. No, 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 no. He, he said uh, the, the moment immediately after she said they ever lost it to a cripple and uh, the look on his face says that it was him and she's like and you're still no, and you're no. still a handsome man you're still beautiful no no I'm no and it's okay. an entirely different cripple oh, let's hear it. yes it's a totally different and I thought she was not... making fun of him no no but he I think I get what you're saying saying he wasn't crippled yet right, right? he was he, not and she was saying yes. like I've, I lost it to a cripple so I would be willing to sleep with you if there was any doubt in your mind because when when she first arrives, she, she was like, what happened? He explains it, and she says, and how's some woman, Esther, I don't know, it started with Emily, and uh, he was like, well, I lost her, too. Yeah. So I, I, so I think he was with somebody else when uh, she still lived okay. in Boston. Guys, I'm right about this. I'm sorry. No, you, you are not. You I am. As a teenager, cool. she slept with him. Take it easy. Was... Take it easy, Papa. Calm down. Yeah. No. Calm down. You got it completely wrong. No. Look, well, look, I, I saw it as that she did lose her virginity to him, and he became crippled later. He she yes. can still see the line, I lost my virginity to a cripple, mm -hmm. and him not have been crippled She's at the time. giving him crap for being a cripple now, which he was not when they slept together yeah. years ago. Also seemed real familiar there to just jump into his lap and give him a kiss. There, I, so. I also feel like we're going to get a lot of crap for how many times we've said cripple out of... Hey, we're quoting the show. <laughs> Here we are. No, yeah. we, we haven't. You just abide. added to that. I quote. know, I did. Drinking game. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, uh, <laughs> Abby... 
Abby remains the worst. Uh, the fact that she she does leave her kids completely mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. unattended. Like call call somebody. A sitter. You Anybody. have so much money. Seriously. So much money. There are websites. There are, if there are websites for hookers, there are <laughs> websites for nannies. There is definitely several websites for nannies. There's you know you could there's Craigslist. There's all kinds of untrustworthy people. Uh, you I'm gonna recommend it. that you do not get a babysitter off of Craigslist. I mean yes, but they're already such irresponsible parents, isn't it? Like okay. Yeah. I mean I, I don't know. Just call somebody. I don't and and when Ray says like where are you get home, she calls him a hypocrite. Which, Why? He has a job. Okay, I'll say that, that that's a fair point. Neither of them are there for the children. And Ray hasn't been there at all. I mean, Abby is is mentally not there, but Ray has not been there at all. Ray has a job that pays for her life that and doesn't her mean like, that he, flying off to... Who bought okay. that plane ticket? That doesn't mean that he can't come home. He's staying in his apartment, not at home. I mean, yeah. if you're going to be a busy dad with a job, not an honest job, well, you can reason... still come home. And he hasn't been home at all, so I think it still is a fair point. Okay, and that... It, they're both in, in not in great water there. So here's here's the other thing, is that had Abby left the home first, mm-hmm. then like then I would be a lot more disgusted with Ray. Whoever abandons the children so that they're just by themselves, I think is the worst parent. Hasn't Ray already abandoned them by not being around for but months at this fine, point? Fine, but then let them have therapy about it. But they're, they're okay. actually in like physical danger with no parental supervision. Yeah. They're in physical danger with parental supervision. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's fair. True. That's a fair point. Yeah. I would have said that Bridget would be at least a semi-responsible guardian for Connor until this episode when she rather than telling him to go to school she... That's not her job. I'm sorry. It's not her... No, it's not the sister's job to tell brother. No, but she was left in charge. Yes, her mom was in charge. But her mom was incompetent. This is not a real person in charge. (laughs) And she was probably drunk at the time when she said so. Uh, Yeah. uh, Guaranteed. I am an older sister. It is our responsibility to get the brother to school. Right. Connor? Yes. Yes. By like two, three years? Two years, yeah. Right. They look the same age. Because she's like a junior. She's definitely not a senior yet. Yeah, so she's, she's gonna be a junior, junior and he's a freshman, he's a freshman. which is okay. name checked right. in this episode. Yeah, yeah, it is checked. Yeah. And she says, she, instead of encouraging him to go to school, she says, maybe you're not ready to go to school yet. Why don't you go home and go upstairs uh, yeah. and make love to your yeah. bed? Yeah. And I'm just like, you know what, girl? Encourage your brother. He is an idiot. No, I... I and, as a sibling, I say you can you can leave that burn on your sibling. Then that's it's pretty funny stuff. Oh, the burn is fine. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. So it's uh, atomic burn. size, atomic size. But burn. what she should have said was, get ready to go to school instead of staying home to make love to your bed. Mm-hmm. So she could still have given him the burn <laughs> and made him go to school. And not only did she tell him to, to cut school, but then she tattles on him when Ray gets home that night. It's true. And she didn't fess up to herself. Right, With the saying, t- telling him that other line instead oh, yeah. of saying go to school. Yeah, she yeah. took herself she, completely out of scenario. She a, left out the whole story. A classic Abby maneuver. This episode, yes. more than anything, showcases that these kids are becoming their parents. Yes. Oh yeah. And Easily. it's horrifying to watch. Yeah. 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 Well, we knew this was going to happen. You repeat the behavior that you see from your parents. I'm, I'm still going to give Abby some some leeway there, being being left in charge by your mom, who's just like, you're in charge. And then leaves and, and doesn't. Uh, Bridget. Bridget, sorry. Yeah. 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 I, uh, you know. I want to give Abby some leeway too, actually. Yeah, I do as well. What? <laughs> I know. What? I'm sorry, this is a Ray Donovan after show for your name is <laughs> on a couple, correct? Yeah, that's me. Okay. Uh, so we got to learn a lot more about Abby's past. Mm-hmm. Uh, how she met Ray. How she met Ray. Their, yeah, their relationship in the beginning. We see her, her brother and her sister. Uh, So it seems like Abby's kind of always been a victim, and not that that's something she should wear like a badge, but what happened? What happened in the past? So I have, like, questions about her childhood, her upbringing, that she just is incapable of taking care of herself. Her sister, who clearly hates her, is like, fine, you know, let me take care of you. Like, you know, let's let's figure this out. Uh, her whole family doesn't approve of Ray. She's cut off from her father. So, so I want to I want to cut her a little slack and figure out what happened. That's right. Margaret did say Ray was dangerous, a very dangerous man. Mm-hmm. And hopefully next time we get to learn more because she missed her flight. Abby's going to be staying in Southie for a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah, it seems that way. Well, she she seems to be largely. I don't know if she if if Margaret hates her. I think maybe she hates the situation that she's been in with Ray. She sort of name checks the thing. All the advice that Abby has given to Lauren is basically advice Abby should be given to herself. And she says, you know, that she doesn't have to be dependent on a man, which is a direct 
direct shot at her about being dependent on Ray, mm -hmm. and then gives her the, the the good advice that that she doesn't have to stay with him, which is very sound advice. Yeah, and it's it's just it's the truth. Even though he's a dangerous guy, mm -hmm. I honestly think Ray would let her go. I mean, it, how often does he care about seeing the kids? We'll see how much he cares once it becomes potential. Once he potentially won't be able to see them anymore if she files for you know sole custody mm -hmm. and tries to drag his business into it. But this storyline to me is part of several very, very smart decisions in plotting this season. Yeah. A third season of a show is very, very important to its future. Because the second season is kind of, it's it's building on the first. The third season is where you see whether or not a show has legs. Is it able to reinvent itself? Yeah. And I feel like they've taken a lot of the strongest elements of the show before and they're saying, you know what? We really need to deepen Abby's character mm -hmm. if the audience is ever going to invest in her because it's been so difficult to do so so far. Yeah, yeah if they're going to have any empathy for her we need to have have a reason why she stayed with him and also you know, she got into the relationship with him and it, it really is not a good one for her. I mean, yes, she's an absentee mother but mm -hmm. she doesn't have a great husband. But it's also, it's a great question to ask at this point in the series, mm -hmm. which is what brought these two people together? Because when we meet them, they are already embroiled in yeah. at least mild conflict. So mm -hmm. Learning that Ray was was a real shit heel when they were in Boston, right? And she said, only like, the back of the alley is like where like the I don't know troublemakers are coming. Yeah, of well, and Mickey Donovan's kid. What else was he going to be? Right. And he, it's only gotten worse since he got to L.A. So finding out who they were when they met mm -hmm. and what brought them together and what caused her to go with him are all very relevant questions. Yeah, Sean, you look like you had a thought there. Maybe. Uh, I did not actually. Oh, okay, I'll shoot it back to you. <laughs> okay, good to know. Uh, well, just I, I want to throw. She she says that uh, when you're young, that's what you think love is. That like that yeah. violence and the fighting. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys agree with that? Like, did you have violent fighting relationships when you were younger? No, I did not. Mm. Early twenties. Not, oh. not in teens. Plot yeah. Not violent fighting relationships. I maybe have had a couple pairs of keys thrown at me <laughs> and a lot of just like reckless behavior, but no, no like crazy fights, passion, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But did you take that for love? No, I took it as like something I had to deal with just to be with a person I was crazy about. So kind yeah. of, yeah. Well, yeah. I think we Well, that. no, because love is like that's an expression of your love. Not like this is a personality quirk of somebody who might be unstable. Just a quirk. Yeah, not stable people, but no violence. If it was yeah. Abby and Ray's first serious relationship, where yeah. they're like, okay, this is the person I'm gonna marry, mm -hmm. right? The person who's not trouble. Maybe I have to put up with some emotional issues, but they can be a good mother or they can be a good father, whatever, <laughs> right? So they're gonna stick to that person, even if they have all these issues to begin with. Mm -hmm. But I just can't imagine, like, this is the one, you know? Like, right. sure, we have bar fights, sure, like, but, uh, but I really think she's going to be a good mom. She isn't. No, probably not. Well, look, maybe he was looking at all the other women surrounding her and their clique of friends and was like, I can't, I can't be with her, I can't be with her, I can't be with her. Hey, Abby, she looks like she's a good girl. Let me be with her. Well, here's the thing. Ray, to a certain extent, is all about loyalty. He's very yeah, loyal and that. devoted to his family. And we also, we don't know when Bridget was conceived. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let's say he knocked up Abby. He's going to stand by her till the end of time until, for the first time, she tested that loyalty from the other side, which had never, ever happened right. before. Yeah, absolutely. They've been together longer than Bridget. Uh, they've been together for like 20 years or something. Yeah, yeah. Bridget's but, like 16. Yeah, so. but they could have... 17, 17. Yeah, I mean, who knows when they got married. Who knows? Um, let's take a quick little break to talk about iTunes. Oh, I love folks. iTunes. Yeah, do you love iTunes? I love iTunes, Isaac. That is a great thing. We hope that you love iTunes. We hope that you head over to iTunes, give us a rating and review on our Ray Donovan after show here. Uh, after Buzz TV has over 100 hours of content every week. If you like talking about TV, or you like watching people talk about TV, this is the place to come and watch and listen and comment and all those fun things. Uh, so head over there and give us a rating and review. Five stars if you really like us. Four stars if you're just kind of okay with us. And we're good with that as well. 
Um, and I believe Sean, and there's some people to shout out. We didn't get any new iTunes reviews, but we do have some people who commented on the YouTube. We, yes, we do. And be sure to watch us on YouTube as well. You probably are right now. Hopefully. And give us a like, that thumbs up at the bottom of the screen. We had Kyle L. give us a good comment today. Uh, he said, to answer your questions about Katie Holmes wearing braces, she was on Good Morning America a couple weeks ago, and I believe. And, and she said that the braces are part of her character and revealed it's because her character suffers from migraines. I've heard that they do help people that suffer from chronic migraines. Well, in Katie Holmes's case with her character. She it, says it in the episode. It, she says it while she's lying down there with Ray, and it apparently doesn't help. It made yeah, them it worse. Yeah, it hasn't helped her. Which would make sense, right? Because your, your teeth are being pulled in, in an unnatural direction. I got braces right. myself, man. It's been, uh, it's been a nightmare. Yeah, it's, got, it's painful, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been awful. Imagine, I, I'm trying to get some Invisalign the coming years or so, and I'm going to be dreading that. There you go. It's but a fun adventure. We also had Adam Moody say, I hope Abby and Finney get some screen time together. They have to do it for the Deadwood fan base. Were they oh, Deadwood yeah. together? They were. I, they were. Oh, that's so yeah, funny. Paula Malcolmson, Ian McShane, uh, were both on that show through its entire yeah. run. All right, well, let's uh, move on to Connor having himself a little house party. He seems to think he's got himself in real good there with the ladies driving the car, I think, over the curb. Is that what that was? Or yes, the, it was. The little bumper there. Maybe we need some driving lessons. I guess he doesn't have his permit yet. Who knows? No. Um, but the ladies come over on their own accord, and who would know that they have plans to bring over their boyfriend? I did. I knew that of from course. the beginning. It's never that easy, Connor. Mm -hmm. Not in high school. Nope. Not with a freshman and these upperclassmen no, girls. you got to have some wicked game to pull, what, seniors, juniors? Yeah. And also not with your nerdy friend in the seat. <laughs> who's, like, not. saying out loud, like, yes, score, yeah. awesome, I can't believe this is happening. Be cool, bro, be cool. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap, man. It's just like us. I dreamed it. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah. not, yeah. Until he event well, and then eventually he goes literally bat s crazy. I'll say on the, the I don't know. He looked like a quarterback or something. Get him right in the arm. On the so alpha male. Yeah. Yeah. Of their clique. Yeah, which is uh, like father like son there. Which yeah. also you guys said during the episode calls back to the back of the bat. The back of the bat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I That's thought that, that was so lame how all these kids come in there and they start taking up all the rooms, and the the worst of it is that the girl that Connor was going to go after, mm -hmm. the alpha female... That he sent his friend home for. She ends up getting with her boyfriend on his parents' bed. Parents bed. Oh, oh, my god! parents' room that he yes. said specifically, yeah. do not enter. It's almost like there's no respect there. None. None. It's a whole and he, he, like. he called him a perv and punched him in the gut. How yeah. awful is that? In someone else's house, mm -hmm. you call them a perv and punch them. I mean, if you're going to do it in somebody's parents' bedroom, the least you could do is let them watch you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. Okay. I mean, it's a free show. It's a price of admission. You it's, a, it's the literal least you could do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it is literally the least. He is going <laughs> to take that out something fierce on that bed. Yeah. <laughs> he just has a lot of pent up emotions work that are going to get emotions. worked it's probably out gonna on be that bed. The other beds now, too. Yeah. Since those have seen Because they let him down, and he needs to establish <laughs> right. dominance once yeah. again. Yeah. Mm, this is a weird. <laughs> Is it? Uh, I don't know. I don't think we've weird. we've delved deep enough into I the psychology of yeah. someone who has sex with beds. Well, yeah. Let's move on. I think know pure about logic, having sex with beds. Please let us know the psychology of it in the comments below or on iTunes. Is it is it psychology really? I mean, like people have sex with inanimate objects all the time. I think it's actually very common. The choice of object though is very <laughs> curious. I, all right, I so. hear couch a lot. I hear couch a lot, and bed is not that different from pretty, couch. It's pretty, yeah. I think it's pretty easy to determine that the mattress has got two sides of yeah. it and wow. it's shaped in a certain way yeah. well, right? if yes, you turn it the other way. But if we're talking about sheer comfort, the, the couch makes far more sense to me because you're lying down. Yeah, but he is a child and he is the rest he's of his 15. family. He's not. He's been Whatever. at this okay. for at least he's, three years. He's a young man, but he uh, his family's in the house. He doesn't have his own house. You know, He has to be in his room with the mattress. Alright, so Bridget um, seems to have a little bit the Jones for her teacher. Well, we think no, a connection, no? not a no. Jones quite yet. Uh, She's gonna I use think it's him. going that way. It's a using situation. No, yes. I think it's going yep. that way. Her Manipulation. Friend, mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but yeah. I think that I think that will turn into 
deeper feelings. I don't know. I feel like she's giving him the full Abby. She's uh, she's got a key piece of information. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, that makes a lot of sense. Giving. Mm-hmm. A, uh, she's got a key piece of information. She lets something slip, mm-hmm. but who yeah, knows if yeah, it yeah, actually yeah. slipped or I didn't she buy let that for that a drop. second. Yeah. No. Yeah. Not for a second. I'm just like I shouldn't have told you that. I've like. said too much already. Yeah. 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 And I storm out Abby, my Americano. Yeah. Yeah. Or not Abby. Why do I keep calling her Abby? Bridget. Bridget. Because she's Bridget. acting so much like Abby. That's why. Yeah, true. She learned a lot of tricks Just last a bit of, season. A bit of indication in there for her acting for me there. Bridget, mm-hmm. not, not uh, Karis. She's a wonderful actress. Yeah. Um, yeah, just also really cool to see Candy Cosgrove there on the show. I yeah, understand. love Aaron Staten. Yeah, which um, oh gosh, no, I lost it again. This is a this is he was, a, he was on Mad Men. He was on Mad Men. Yes, yeah. for all seven seasons. Yes, fantastic. And he's uh, rich, I think now. The character. Uh, anyway, let's move on to Ray. Uh, the teacher. Name. His Kenny Cosgrove. It's it's a. If you watched Mad Men, you'd, you'd know be a, okay. you'd be all all a, all a flutter. You'd be about. like, wow, that was so good <laughs> or terrible. It was terrible. Uh, so Ray, um, going over to pick up Casey. Um, Doing seems, babysitting duty. Yeah, I was gonna say it uh, seems like his job at this point is is, is a babysitter. The, the moment where he's looking out over like uh, an infinity pool there over the things like. Oh, so this really did cost me something, and this is what my life has become at this point. Mm-hmm. But is it so bad? It's is it so bad? bad? I mean, he probably has like a very generous salary, right? Uh, no, he doesn't no even, doubt. He, he doesn't even know what he's got, right? He just signed this huge contract. Well, he doesn't know what his salary is. Finding out what it is, but before this episode, before he signed with Finney, he said that he didn't really want to work for anyone ever again. So now he's working for someone, not let alone he's not even, I guess, doing the stuff he enjoys, which is hurting people or something to yeah, that effect. So far, all he's had to do is like pick up a kid, stop for cigarettes, and you know, I mean, it's like <laughs> yeah, not you know sit in a meeting, like but talk an to an ad- actress. He's yeah. an adult man. I don't think that. I mean, Ezra did give him assignments, but he wasn't under this sort of like thumb here. He did give somebody a little bit of violence. He slapped Sandy in the face. Amazing. That was yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. That Twice. Was like one of the best scenes of any television show I've watched ever. But this, I, I don't. It was. So incredible. I, I, I'll say it was a bitch slap for a bitch. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, you know, he called her a pair of tits and an arm. That deserves a big slap. Yes. Yeah. He was just getting his makeup done. I mean, it was just perfect. It was just, it was oh, perfect. and then the look on his face when he had to spin that dumb wheel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's never been slapped before. Yeah, I feel like that might be it, the most ludicrous thing that has ever happened on this show. And there's a lot of great Hollywood satire on this show. But the most ludicrous idea is that America's favorite game show would be just the spinning wheel from The Price is Right over and over and over and over again. I don't watch it. It's Wheel of Fortune. I don't know. Well, (laughs) no, Wheel of Fortune at least has letters. And it's horizontal. Well, she said... It's still spinning and there's still a lady that points at letters. It's... She said he could... She's awesome. He couldn't figure out one of those puzzles, any one of those puzzles, so we yeah. assume that it's like. Is this maybe oh, okay. some sort of inside inside commentary on Pat Sajak, perhaps? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And on Vanna, because she never spoke, and then all of a sudden she was speaking, and now she's arguably mm-hmm. she always was the star of the show. Yeah, a little inside Hollywood stuff there. I, by the way, I peed next to Pat Sajak once. I thought you should all know that. All right. Wow. And you're in old buddies. I didn't look. Come on. You didn't look. <laughs> no, of course I didn't look. I Pat didn't look. Sajak. Yeah. I was too busy uh, handling my own business. You're there. probably way taller than him. You could easily see down that urinal. He's a, do- he's a Dodger fan. You could, fan. Sneak, a peek. You could no. sneak a peek without him seeing because you're so much I taller. I'm curious. I'm only interested in seeing one penis. So I, I, feel like, I, I feel like half the fun of being on this panel this season is torturing you, Isaac, and I'm is sorry. It? Yes. <laughs> Interesting. Is the one penis you like to see somebody else's other than yours? <laughs> okay. Oh. It's Michael oh. Fassbender's. Well, it's everybody's glorious. seen that penis. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, so him and Paige. Yeah. Ray and Paige. Uh, Paige wants him to... <laughs> 
work for him. Seems to be ordering him around. That's why yeah. he gets to the uh, game show. What do you got there, Lee? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, when we were t doing the internet comments, the YouTube comments, and there was the point about the braces mm -hmm. and the migraines, I have to wonder if the braces didn't help and they only made it worse, mm -hmm. how much worse her physical condition and her, her mental condition is going to become. And I, I wonder if we're going to have him fall for yet another doomed woman. And with the re with the recurrence mm -hmm. of his visions of his dead sister this season, right. there is an ongoing theme of his love for women who are just doomed. Well, it, it, which is sort of tied in with Chloe and Tommy, I mean, because he seems to really care about them. And mm -hmm. it, it, it's an interesting thing that he gives a lot of respect to people who need help. Mm -hmm. um, but he also he's got so much more care for these people than his own kids. You know, his own kids need him more than these people do, and it's kind of baffling why he it's, doesn't do that. It's an irony because he's providing all of his finance to his family, mm -hmm. right? But he doesn't give them any of the emotional support, right. any of the love, and he's he's giving that outward to the other people who yeah. he encounters. Because he's the world. really sticking up for Tommy there. He doesn't have a specific reason to, other than that he knows him. I feel like he has a a clear differential between his own family, to whom he considers himself a cancer. He's like, they are better off without me. I am True. dangerous and I can't help them. These people, I can use my skills to help. Yeah. He doesn't, even though it's been shown time and again that he knows how to connect with these kids and tell them what they need to specifically hear. Specifically Bridget. Yeah. Specifically Bridget, over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. He has just the worst memory of the fact that he's able to do it. Mm -hmm. It's 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 baffling. He's had so many great scenes where he visits Bridget in her bedroom and talks mm -hmm. with her, um, where they share the bed together and they just do like the father daughter thing. Just it's really well, sweet. They sit down and talk yeah, to each other. Yeah, so they sit down. I know. I, I don't I, mean get those mean thoughts out of your brain, there, man. And where, your eyes. where he talks to Connor too, and and they at the end of that one party in season two, uh, I think it was at well, the, well, the middle of the season. They walk just walk this way. Yeah, walk dance. this way where they're dancing together. There's yeah, a connection yeah. right there too. Yeah. Um, well, and also. So at the end of the episode, though, it seems that Bridget is definitely sort of kind of done with him there. Um, not listening to his advice at all, yeah. asking him why he didn't come home, and then when he wants to talk, just blowing him off. Kind of dodge. Yeah. Um, yeah, which was really sad to see. Uh, unfortunately, I think we're almost out of time here. Already? Yeah, it's getting oh pretty gosh. close. Um, we got five minutes. Well, we got five minutes, okay. Yeah, I'm dying to know what it is that uh, Paige has on Finney. Like, this this very cleverly, very efficiently mm, established the power dynamics in the... Okay. So I'm kind of unclear on what happens. So Paige and Finney have a conversation, and Finney reverses his right. position on the sale. At first, he didn't want to sell it. Mm -hmm. And he even took more time and postponed the meeting. Then he goes to talk with Paige. He comes out, he says, oh, I see where she's going with this. Yeah. Right? Which, which leads you believe that she strong-armed him with some good information. And he didn't like it, though. He still didn't want to do the deal. He said she was going to like have a grand stadium here in L.A. An right? NFL stadium. Yeah, an NFL stadium. Yeah. Well, I guess we can predict what that means later in the episode here. Mm -hmm. In like two minutes. Okay. Um, anybody got anything else? Or there's a bunch of storylines here that we haven't covered, but uh, I guess I want to know what's going to happen with uh, with Bunch. He's very, very guilty with Terry. He's like, I, I feel bad. I kind of took over your place, and I shouldn't have put my name on the door. I, for some reason, it was duct tape. Yeah, well, for some reason, <laughs> I feel like he thinks that on some level, the outburst earlier um, where Terry tried to kill Mickey was about Bunchy, because Bunchy, it's like. A, what I love most about this show is how deep these characters are and how closely they hew to these characterizations and everything that these guys mm -hmm. do is informed by the characteristics that have already been set up and he is somebody who he's a little he's a little boy he's a little yeah, child he's a and guy. he thinks that everything that bad that happens is on him and is there something I can do to cheer you up and right, what was, was Bunch involved in the uh, robbery he was not he was not okay. nope he was not involved. Yeah, who 
Uh, so I mean, he's just he's just a sweet guy, and that's kind of his go-to. I'm sorry I took your office and all that kind of stuff. He's you know. Yeah, but the question is, is Terry going to be interested in putting on a massive luchador super extravaganza? <laughs> I don't think so. It's a front. It's not made, meant to make money. I think at least Terry understands. We that. didn't get to see the Mexicans this episode. No, we did not. They were too busy dealing with uh, Jade there, who maybe helped out uh, Terry. It's hard to she know. didn't. She did not. No, he kicked her out. Yeah, That's she was true. going to. I just didn't know if she did, and then they were having like a post No, conversation she accused I mean. Francis of being inadequate at oral fixation. And because of that, well, Terry Nick was incensed. Well, did say that she was a world-class... Um, at giving fellatio. Yes. yes. And very few people and get to be world-class at anything. It is her profession, so we got to believe she's probably pretty good at it. I don't, I don't think that's true, because, you know, Mick has said a mouth is a mouth. So I don't <laughs> think his standards are that high. That's true. His standards are fairly low, but let's just say that she gets paid to do it. Did so we get to talk fair. about Tommy Wheeler? Um, we did a little bit, but I think we got to get out of here. Um, I got a little news and gossip to okay. drop before we head over to Brooklyn. Do it. After Buzz TV News. Yeah, just a little bit of news and gossip. Ian McShane, who plays Mr. Finney on the show, has been casting season six of Game of Thrones. Yes. Yeah. So I, I have to imagine that Showtime and HBO, since they're opposite parent companies and they're rivals, that he's only on Ray Donovan for this one season if that if he's going to be on Thrones. I don't think they'd let him star in both at the same time. Yeah, I doubt it. Yeah. I so he it. either fades into the ether, getting written out, or he dies. Hmm. Predict. Hmm, that sounds like a prediction. James in the booth, you're on it today, yeah. man. You're after Buzz. Nice TV. work. Well, Sean, go ahead. Seems like you got a prediction yeah. on your mind. Yeah, there. come on, Sean. Well, that was that was one that I had. Um, I feel like I don't know. Like I, I feel like Ray has got to get down with Paige at some point sure. this season. Maybe they're going to extend it a little bit further. Maybe next episode. Maybe the episode he after. Means the sex. Matt, that's what he means. The sexy time. Oh, with Paige. With Paige. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I feel like. Uh, what did you hear? What did you hear? I heard Bridget. Wow. <laughs> you were thinking Bridget, and that's what I was going to think next and say next. So Bridget, she's definitely going to put the moves on her professor in some way, the only way a 16, 17-year-old girl can, right? She's going to entice him into something. Honey she's going to honey pot him. Yes, I like that. Yeah. Good, good, uh, good euphemism. Okay. Yeah, and that's all I got. Anybody Lieberman, else? Who's you next? seem to be in turmoil over there. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm deeply in turmoil over what just transpired. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so, let's see. First of all, uh, Terry's not going to have any interest in putting on a luchador show. And You're uh, the one who asked the question, now you just answered it. I, I did answer the question. Yeah. Uh, it was my you time to think about with it. my prediction. Okay. My prediction is, based on the next time on scenes, which just showed uh, our, our uh, lucha lady unzipping her top a little bit mm -hmm. for Bunchy, is that Terry is not going to be interested in putting on this show, and he's going to say, yeah, I'm sorry, you know, it's not happening, and then she uses her dominatrix skills to get him to put it on anyway. To get Terry to put it on? To get Bunch no, to put it on? No, to get Bunch to put it on. To get mm. Bunch to circumvent his brother and make it happen is what I think. Sure. Uh, I'm very, very, very intensely curious about what it is that Paige has uh, on her father. Mm -hmm. In terms of who's worse... I'm very, I'm not sure who it is. Because it, it, I feel like at first blush, it would be Finney, and it's too obvious to have Paige ultimately be the worst one and be the mastermind and be the one who's lying. But at the same time, I feel like that's where we're going to go, and it's still going to be shocking, where he is going to fall for Paige, he's going to work around Finney, he's, it's going to blow up in his face, and then at the end of it, after he's taken out her father, she's going to reveal that she was horrible too, mm -hmm. and even worse, and had been playing him the whole time, and yeah. even gotten him to fall for her, and it's just going to be apocalyptic. Yeah, well, she's already played him once with the, the guy in the hotel there, so. Yeah, never trust. I think there's something very complicated between between Paige 
and her father. And I think yeah. that uh, she's either crazy or they're making her crazy. I think they're drugging her. Uh, there's no reason for... Uh, she's always having a drink or having a bottle of pills around That's interesting. or, or mm. something. And uh, and perhaps it was suggested to her, hey, like the braces will help your migraines, whatever. And right. and so I think that, and that's probably something that she either knows or or will find out and and, uh, and Ray won't stand for that. Um, but there's something complicated going on there. Um, yep. And I the, also with their, um, their relationship that sort of mirrors in ways Ways, um, Ray's and Bridget's, you know, now that Bridget, he's, she's always been daddy's girl, and now uh, um, that she's not responding, she won't even go to hug him. Um, I think that him seeing Finney and Paige go at each other uh, will yeah. make him think twice about Hopefully his relationship. Hopefully wake him so. up there. Um, Bunch is going to hook up with a luchador there, and that's definitely going to happen. The Black Widow. Yeah, the complicated thing with Paige in the background, which we forgot to hit on, is that her and Varric are married. Husband yes. and wife. So the complication there is that those two are pulling the strings behind the scenes. What and if he's the puppet master? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. And she was taking off in like, layman's terms. Just as I was, I was saying. Layman's terms, laying it okay, well, She took off her wedding ring during the call with Ray. She did take the wedding ring off the, during the Naughty, call. Naughty, naughty. Yeah. Maybe Finney right made her marry him. Mm. It's possible, but that's uh, that's where the double cross was going to happen. Okay. Anyway, folks, thanks for joining us this week. This has been a whole lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Matt Lieberman, where can people find you online? Well, you can find me on Twitter. Once again, I'm Matt Lieberman. Or you can find me at YouTube.com slash Matt Lieberman, where I put out videos five days a week. You can also find me on SourceFed and SourceFed Nerd, as well as The Strain After Show here on AfterBuzz TV. And Sean. Hey, I'm Sean Overman, guys. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Sean Austin O. That's S-E-A-N-A-U-S-T-I-N-O. And you follow me at Copper Mayor, K-O-P-P-E-L-F-O-R-M-A-Y-O-R. And you can follow me at Isaac Johnson on Twitter, the Isaac Johnson on Instagram. Matt thinks the show's over. He's taking his headphones off. And also my YouTube channel, the Isaac Johnson. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.